So you just finished a session about um, about five Java features you didn't know about. Exactly. So, so we love secrets here. Yeah, I think now people know more about those secrets, and that's what? good. Because I love to being out in the world and speak about uh, Java. I love Java. I've been working with Java since 1.0. So uh, I, I think also you learn a lot of stuff by telling other people how things work. Because right. then you really have to understand how, how it really does work. So that's interesting. So what what were I mean? What is your favorite um, um, feature? Well, my feature is um, um, my kind of mission is to make it easier to work with a lot of data. So we have a framework called Speedment, oh, which yeah, allows yeah. you yeah, which allows you to work with databases and view them as uh, Java streams, the standard streams, and that makes everything so much easier because there's a, an entire ecosystem around the streams. So you can use them for uh, producing and working with data, aggregate data and collect them to lists or sets or whatever. And there are so many examples out there on the net that you can just reuse. Uh, but instead of using lists and sets, you can use a database as a source. I see. So, uh, and it's all open source. So you can go there and try it out or you can look at the code, how it works. Cool. Mm -hmm. so, so what are the, the five, uh, the other features? The other features. Like? Uh, one of the features was that you can work with objects mm -hmm. without actually creating them. That's kind of a secret. They are created on the stack rather than on the heap. And that's good for performance reasons because if you create a lot of unnecessarily objects, it slows your application down, and particularly when you had to collect all those objects when they go out of scope. So I have a kind of a, a slide showing that. Uh, let's see if I have it here. Uh, trying to log in. So this is the idea. Instead of uh, allocating stuff uh, on the heap, which is big, you can just allocate temporary objects on the stack, and they can be discarded off much faster because when you when you return on your from your procedure, you just pop the stack pointer and it's gone. So that will save you a lot of performance. I see. That's one of the five secret things, although yep. it's not really a secret because everyone uses it, but they don't know it. Right. Yeah, so that's good. Um, so that's another uh, secret is how the compiler works mm -hmm. and behind the scene. And, yeah, and so what's, what's important about, like what should people know about the compiler and how and it They works? should know that they don't have to optimize. You know, there is this funny rule that says, one, don't optimize, two, don't optimize now, uh, because the compiler can do so much for us. So okay. we shouldn't, you know, prematurely optimize and, and sacrifice clarity in code for performance. We, we will get anyhow. That mm -hmm. makes no sense. So, so the, the idea would be to test it and to see really yeah. if the optimization is exactly. needed. Exactly. And uh, once you're talking about test, that was another thing we talked about. We talked about how do you benchmark tests uh, mm -hmm. that really tells you the truth. Well, they never really tell 100% truth, but they tell more truth than if you just uh, have a wall clock and then measure their time because that, that doesn't say so much. Be because there is a framework called JMH that allows you to do uh, kind of a harness and make your test in a much better structured way. And it can kind of warm up your JVM so you take benefit of all the compilation. It can um, prevent accidental short circuit of method that doesn't return anything useful. So you actually test your real performance. So that was another thing we talked about. So why are people not doing that? Or, or Some I, people I are doing it, but uh, you know, uh, you tend to be lazy. Yeah. You do what you always did. So you you have a wall clock and you just measure the number of milliseconds, but that doesn't say anything because uh, your your process might be scheduled out for during that time, and then your your method was slow, or uh, something else happened, or maybe you didn't warm up your JVM and didn't compile it before you really tested it. So you don't test the performance of your production yeah. system. I see. So that it's better to use the standardized framework when people have already thought about all those culprits for you and taking care of that. So you just use like a, a good tool that yeah, will actually tool. do that you, you for put you. in your method in the tool and it will strip away all those uh, pitfalls for you. Nice. And, and what was the name of the tool? Uh, JMH, Java Micro Benchmark Harness. Okay. So that, and that's included in Java these days, so you can use. Okay. And there was another thing that you can, if you have a lot of data, and you can't have it on the heap because the heap gets flooded with objects and the garbage collect gets slow. So we told them a way to uh, have that off heap. So you lay it out yourself in memory and basically have your own memory manager and you can have terabytes of data in the JVM with instant access without garbage collection. So that is, I think a lot of people ask questions about that after the presentation. 
So what kind of questions do they ask? Uh, how, how is it done? Yeah. Uh, what's the performance? Uh, have you done this in, in real system? And yes, we have. So that kind of questions, uh, is it hard? And it doesn't have to be that hard to do it on, an, on, a, on a simple level. Right, because they are Java developers. So yeah, they don't yeah. really but, but this is kind of using Java as, uh, as a little bit more like C. Yeah. So you can pick up the, the type safety and the good things with Java. Uh, but you still get performance. Cool. So that's good. That's good? Yes. Any other? Did we do five? Um, no, there were some other. What was that? Yeah, how you, that's a related question. How you aggregate data? Because mm -hmm. suppose now that they have a lot of data, but you want to aggregate it. And typically during aggregation, you create a lot of temporary data. And so again, you have this problem with garbage collection and a lot of objects being unnecessarily created. So it's not only they can have data offline, you can also compute off heap. So you can have aggregations that live completely off heap and they click together very nicely because the data you have off heap can be also aggregated off heap and then you only read into the JVM or the heap rather uh, the actual result of the aggregation, which perhaps one times or one million times less than the entire data itself. So that's, that's a clever thing you can do too. And we also have tools for that obviously, but if you don't, uh, Want to use them? You can write your own codes. So. Is it is it hard to write your own tools? Yeah, it's a device? bit. Uh, we have a lot of experience, obviously, in this area. So, uh, if you want to do it in a production environment, it's hard, I would say. Mm -hmm. So then, I would recommend people to use things like Figment or other tools out there. Cool. Mm -hmm. And so, um, any other questions people had, like uh, big concerns? I mean, this is Sweden. People don't don't ask that much as in the US, so they are kind of more True. reluctant, and also. Uh, the talk today was uh, quite big audience. And then I think in general, people are more reluctant to raise their hand and ask questions because they don't want to look down, even though most of the questions were quite clever. But I think if you ask a question, it's likely that half of the other people have the same question. So it's right. good that people ask questions. Yes. And sometimes we are thinking about maybe handing out candy for someone to ask something to kind of promote that behavior. <laughs> Or, I mean, there are also a lot of questions online, so yeah. it's like... Yeah. Usually you get some mails or Twitter yeah. uh, asking questions afterwards. Right. And also I think that since all these uh, talks are being filmed, right. uh, you get the most uh, views after the talk, actually. So the ratio is maybe 1 to 5 or 1 to 10. So if uh, we have 500 today, maybe we'll get 5,000 viewers right. eventually. Cool. Yeah. So you did also another talk? I'm going to make another oh, talk you, tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's more in detail of how you work with terabytes of data or heap. I mean, it's easy to work with a small data set, but when they grow, you have to think about the complexity of your operation. For example, if you want to retrieve all films that are longer than X seconds, you don't want to... Uh, or, uh, no, reset. You don't want to iterate over maybe a billion. Can you fix it? Thank you. You don't want to iterate over a billion records. Uh, you only want to iterate over those that fulfill that requirement immediately. So it's about how you index your, your structure. And, and you can't have the index on heap because that will also be too much data. So even the indexes have to be off heap too. And that's non-trivial. So uh, I will go a little bit more into the details, how you can build that kind of system how, while still retaining performance and thread safety and how you can update data while retaining all the constraints that you have on such a system and all the requirements. So that's more an in-depth talk than this. This is more like general. We picked up five easy things and easily digested, whereas tomorrow it's going to be a bit tougher for the audience, I think, and maybe for me, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, I would say it's, uh, it's more specific, right? It's, right, to, it's very much. To, right. But I like yeah, that mix. I mean, some people are interested in what's going on, Yep. Maybe I can pick something there, pick yep. something there. Absolutely. And other people would really like to zoom in to some specifics. So that's good for everybody, I think. Cool. So any, um, are you, do you blog? Or yeah, you I have a blog about? called Mimbar's Java Pot. I thought that was a good name when I lived in California. <laughs> no jokes about that. But um, I have like millions of reads on that blog. So, uh, and also uh, um, a blog uh, writer on Diesel, which is a magazine for Java. And I also have written articles in uh, Oracle uh, Java magazine for a while. So I've written some uh, text 
I like that too. I like to interact with developers, so that's fun. And also on GitHub, of course, you can interact with me and the team. Excellent. Well, um, thank you so much. Thank for you, too. Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you. you.